All right. Logan, welcome to the Soulcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, we were talking before about, you know, our various journeys and how we got here. And I was just saying that, you know, there's a lot of talk, especially on Twitter, about how college is not necessarily good to go through. Uh, but for me personally, I know that I, I don't know whether I would have ascertained the knowledge and life experience that I have that would that has helped me succeed to this point if I didn't go to college and I know that some of my deepest friendships were made at college whether or not I studied as hard as I should have or whatever uh, I think it was a good experience to go through as a young dude and taught me a lot of things um, but yeah I guess I just wanted to comment on a lot of young guys message me and say should I go to college, man? Like, I don't really know what I want to do. Uh, I don't know, like, wh whether what I'm studying is the right move for me because I'm not necessarily interested in it. Um, but I always say, like, if you don't know what you want to do, like, unless you have a clear path of, okay, I want to pursue this and directly do this, then college is not necessarily the baddest, the worst thing to do because it's going to give you a whole breadth of experience. You're going to meet a lot of people. You have to learn responsibility, time management, all of that. And of course, the money side of it is a bit different in America than it is uh, where I am. Um, so that's a consideration. But yeah, I, I always recommend young guys to, if you are young, you're 18 or 20, you don't necessarily like just get out into the world and experience life. You know, that's the greatest teacher that we'll ever have. And I know like, like the life lessons I've learned, I've learned from living it, not necessarily just studying something or going down a career path that has to be locked in when you're 18. I think especially now, <clears throat> the grander lessons we can learn from just living life, meeting people, learning other people's stories, that kind of stuff is much more valuable than, you know, locking into a life path and career path straight away. For, and planning it out for the next 50 years. I don't think that's real anymore in today's economy. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. So like, I think it depends too where you're at. You know, when I went to college, I went to play football. And so that was really, that was really why, why I went to college is because I wanted to play ball. But as I think about, you know, I agree with that wholeheartedly. My, I would not be half the person that I am if, if I didn't go and have those experiences and figure out and really too, and there's so many factors that, that fed into it, but I want, I went to play ball, but you know, my family, even if I wouldn't have done that, you know, my family was really big on college and education and things like that. So, mm. you know, I went and I was always really smart, really good grades, very, very good academic student. So I, you know, I, I graduated high school and basically, picked engineering as my major to start out with just because it's like, oh, okay, like what can I do that's going to make a lot of money if I go to college? Like, boom, yeah. engineering. And that was it. But it really, I mean, that even really wasn't it. I just wanted to play football. And is that, yeah. you know, you know, I got out of kind of the, my hometown shell and a few, bunch of different things happened. Yeah. But then it, once I realized that, you know, a lot of that was, I wanted to play football because you know, because col college football is very different. It becomes much like a job. It's it's just a different dynamic. And I realized, man, maybe yeah. I don't. It, it was different for me. It wasn't so passion driven. But also too, I realized that part of that desire was just it was just ego. You know, I wanted to. I didn't really like just breathe football. You know, I love the sport of football, but it was really more so like it was very egoic, I guess, in the sense of I love the the recognition that came with it and things like that. But if I wouldn't have gone to college yeah. and experienced that, I mean, it's just, there's so many different things. And I think this is just in life in general, you know, every single experience you go through is going to shape you. And I, I don't, yeah. I, I, I just don't know how you can regret anything. You know, I would say that, you know, knowing what I know now, um, if you are 18 and you, you know, you don't know what you want to do, I wouldn't say go to college. I wouldn't recommend it. You know, there's a million ways to make money and it's becoming yeah. more decentralized every day. And especially too, if you know, if you if you're going to college yeah. and it's free, go to college, you know? But you know, if if I were to do it all over yeah. with my if I, you could put me back in the same brain that I have today, then I would have 
probably not I would have either a walked on somewhere bigger and really tried to make it in football like make it big or b not gone to school yeah. at all you know and move to Europe or if you're if you are gonna and the other thing too that I think a lot of people miss and I miss this as a cocky ass 18 year old commute like you can go the community <laughs> college route and get done two years you know and save and s- stack yeah. bread you can work and it's it's funny because I went to a pretty good high school academically and I was really looked down upon I was a person that thought that was like oh that's for like people that oh aren't doing this or that or whatever but that's so false that was such a dumb idea that i had but yeah i mean you're right man you just got to figure out what you want i think the younger you can do that and the earlier you can do that the better and the the beautiful thing about it is and it's the same thing that we've been talking about with going to school is the younger you can do it you might do it for a year and realize it's not for you but now you have all that experience and you know yourself that much better to pivot yeah, I mean, you can work different jobs to kind of get uh, an idea of what you would like to do. Like I've worked manual labor jobs, which I think it gave me a great work ethic in terms of like, you know, you have a job that's tough. Sometimes you just got to do it. I worked as a carpenter. I worked, you know, in a uh, kind of a, a larger scale production warehouse where we were making these huge wooden boards um to be used in like dockyards and things for ships as they come up to the um to the like refuel or whatever um so it was pretty tough work we were using tools using our hands and i think that personally gave me a huge appreciation for all of the trades in general where before i think just as a result of the paradigm of like being academic focused at school that i didn't necessarily understand or appreciate the value of like hard manual labor and it also gave me an extra appreciation for the knowledge-based careers that um you can work towards because you do see the guys that have worked manual labor for like four years and their bodies fucked which is you know that it is what it is that's what a lot of people have to do and you know that's that's great but i think like understanding what that kind of work is like gave me more perspective onto what I wanted to do in life. So if you're in a job that you don't necessarily see yourself working in for life, that's fine. Learn what you can from it. You know, I'm I'm much better with my hands and tools and things than I would have been without that stuff. Um, But as a young guy, I think you should just experiment, just, you know, take a risk um, you never know who you're going to meet in that job. You never know who you're going to impress. Uh, you never know where it's going to lead. So just like with anything, like you said, don't regret anything. One, because regret is just a fucking stupid thing to do. Like you can't go back and change the past. You can't, uh, you know, make yourself do something different. It's happened. The past has happened. The future isn't here yet. The only moment is the present. So it's the <clears throat> grander idea of, living in the moment, which means, you know, you went through the stuff that you've went through, the relationships you've had for a reason. Uh, That's the only real mindset to have because otherwise you're just gonna regret every small thing that you've done. Uh, And, you know, I used to do this. I think it's just uh, the default setting for humans is to look back on the life, on your life and go, oh, I wish I would have done that better or I wish I would have not done that. But it's completely pointless. Literally, there's nothing. There's nothing good that can come of regretting your actions and all the rest of it. All you can do is whatever situation you're in, accept what you've done, learn the lessons from it, glean what information you can from it, and then move forward. If you don't like your current situation, reflect on that and see what steps you can take now to change that. What, no matter what it is, whether it's a relationship or a job or whatever, um, there is always a way out as long as you put the work in I think um, and the whole wishing would have could have should have it's irrelevant and a waste of mental energy yeah and a, a f- yeah I totally agree a few things that you touched on there you know because I also have worked I've, I mean my first job I worked in a gym coincidentally enough coincidentally enough uh, at the local YMCA and then you know I've done a bunch of stuff I've done landscaping um, 
I drove a forklift yeah. for a while, and I think one. I I also have an appreciation for manual labor. Honestly, like I I actually sometimes wish I could do it again just for a couple days, just because there is something primal about like being outside, slinging some tile yeah. or just doing something. There's something great yeah. about it that I do enjoy, but it does give you perspective of like, okay, yeah. man, like I don't want to be. 55 years old and destroying my body and eating like eating like junk and it's just not a good environment i think for for conscious people but i mean i I have a lot of respect for it but one thing that i'd like to that that came to mind with that and you talked about you know take the experience from it you know doing all those things if you if you are present for them you can take a lot away from you know what you may consider a bullshit job you can take a lot away from it for example right i worked in a warehouse and yeah. yeah, like I, I freaking hated going to work every day that summer, but like I now saw the back end of what it looks like to run a big warehouse. And now I'm, you know, I'm in yeah. quote unquote internet marketer or, and doing e-commerce and all these things like that experience will help me if I ever need to open up a warehouse, which probably I would like to do, yeah. you know? She probably and it's, will. And it's in that yeah. specific knowledge. And so you should, even if you're in a bad situation, you should absorb as much as you can because there's always there's always something to be learned. And and the other thing too that I think you touched on is the you know the the presence and not regretting things. And a lot of that is a lot of that is perspective, man. People are so impatient. They're so impatient. They want everything, and especially with social media, and I do it, I'm sure you do it, we all do it. You know, we see people that have these things that we think we want. And it's like, first off, you don't know that there's always, you're always going to have problems. You know, all these superstars, they have way more pressure than you do. You know, people that are unbelievably loaded have way more pressure than people that don't. Like once I started making money and figuring it out, I had way more pressure than when I was, you know, 19 and didn't have a clue and was just happy go lucky fucking off trying to figure out what I was going to do. Right now I have, and especially as the further you progress, it only gets worse. And so it's like, I think you should try to find peace and and presence and and calm in that presence as the default. And if you can do that, you're probably going to be a lot better off. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, it's like uh i think it's just you know a result of the philosophy reading i've done uh again life experience just maturing in general um you can't wish away the time that you have now but my dad said to me at a very young age which has kind of stuck with me um he said that you know i was when i was like you know 13 14 uh some of the other guys uh would grow facial hair and I couldn't at all. And it's such a stupid thing. But as a young kid, like, you know, <laughs> oh, am I not as manly as the other guys? Um, so I said, to them, oh, I wish I was older. I wish I could just, you know, grow a beard, you know, as silly as it was. But he said that, you know, don't wish your life away because, yeah, one day you will be able to grow facial hair. Rocking a beard now. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, there is something to appreciate at every stage of life, whether you're young and you necess- don't necessarily have the the problems that come with success or, you know, making more money or just having more responsibility in general, you know, that is stressful to a degree. I would argue that you can also make that less stressful. Uh, just, you know, you can let the stress get to you or you can just go, okay, I have a job, I have responsibilities, I have to do this in order to get this done and I'm gonna take care of that. And outside of that, I'm not gonna worry about it. I think that's a a good mindset to have in general, but also when you have more responsibility, it's just a natural thing to feel more stressed by it. Uh, So if you're young and like, I think a lot of guys, you know, wish they had the success that usually comes with five, 10 years of study and work and just life experience and progressing as a dude, like you compare yourself to guys that have been working for 15 10 years already you know as an 18 20 year old you're like pretty much still a kid you know and that's a a symptom of the comparison of social media in general like like you said you see a guy that's making a lot of money and he looks you know looks like he's having a sick time or whatever that's another thing i've unfollowed 
I mean, I deleted my personal Instagram and all the rest of it uh, just because it's a waste of time, full stop. Like, I have my friends who I talk to and text, but <clears throat> Instagram, in terms of just following a bunch of random people that you're never going to meet or talk to, it's just a waste of time. Um, if you're making money from social media in some way or you're building an audience, great, that's good. That's a positive use of social media. But if you're always looking at other people that are further ahead than you, you're only seeing their highlight reel, but you're privy to your own behind the scenes. So that's a, a concept that I learned a few years ago. And it's like, it's, it helps put it into perspective. So because you're privy to all your mistakes, all your fuck ups and all your failures, but you're only seeing other people's highlight reel and their best things, you know, their best pictures, their best parts of their life. You don't know what it's taken for them to get there. You don't know if they've grinded it out for years, not having any success and not, you know, seeing their friends or whatever to get there, but you just see the success part. And then you're like, oh man, why am I not yeah. like that? But no one experiences only success and happy good times. It just doesn't work like that. Um, so I would honestly recommend deleting your social media unless you're working with it for some purpose. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just a... <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't it's hard know if to I'd do necessarily because you feel like maybe you're missing out on stuff, uh, but... Oops, sorry, you cut out a little bit there. But uh, yeah, I was just, I mean, I don't know if yeah. I would say delete it necessarily, but you just, you have to figure out what, the th and that's with, the, with this whole thing, you know, people looking at other people. It, you have to have, everything has to come from your own internal point of origin or else you will never be happy, you'll never be fulfilled. The more you do things, you know, if like for example, maybe someone, for, for the right person, you know, maybe they have great relationships on Instagram or whatever, and then they say, oh, Soul Bra said delete this. No, you, you need to, like people don't think for themselves enough. They're so, and even when they think, and you see that a lot in uh, our quote, sphere of Twitter, you know, you need to think for yourself and make your own decisions as a man, always. You should take into consideration, mm. you know, even the best advice, it, it might not work for you. And you need to know that about yourself and have the mm. wherewithal and really the courage to say, okay, I'm gonna, you know, take a stand for this. And I think I said this to somebody, uh, I tweeted something about like the, the typical like Dodge Charger, Challenger archetype that kind of I have in my head. One of the guys was like, well, what if I just really like Mustang? Well, get a fucking Mustang, dude. Like, it's your it's your <laughs> life. Yeah. It's your life. And the more the more yeah. you do things from any sort of external origin, and this is really what I think has been the you know the keystone in my life, and it's kind of spiritual. I'm really kind of a spiritual person, honestly. But it's you need yeah. to de you need to design, and I know Lobo talked about this, and a couple other people I think have touched on it too but you really do have to design your life and what it looks like for you. And a lot of times, you know, people want to, yeah. people want the success and the, and they want to do all these big things. But you know what, the, like, in my opinion, the biggest contributor to that success is, is going deep, like deep into yourself and really figuring out what, what bothers you? Like yeah. what is, what is haunting your mind? Because that, I think that's the key to success really. It's, you know, we get this idea that you need to hustle and grind and grind and, you know, and you do, there's work involved. There's always work involved, but the minute you can really truly shift your perspective into a state of, of just, just being the person that you want to be in the person that you are yeah. deep down, it's, it's you, you know, that's when it clicks because yeah. it's, it's just like nothing else matters at that point. You don't, you're not worried about anybody else because it's yeah. just you. Yeah, you're not living up to other people's expectations or the general society's expectations of how you should act or what you should spend your time doing or what you should enjoy. You know, if you have a hobby of collecting rocks and that's what you fucking love and you're obsessed with rocks, then go collect rocks. You know, it's just because someone it's not cool to other people, it literally doesn't matter. And if you're like you said, if you're basing your life, I think the number one 
reason why a lot of people are depressed and feel bad within their own lives is because they know inherently what they want they know inherently what they enjoy but they're in a career because their parents said so or they never took a chance on running their own business because you know other people said that it's dangerous or risky or whatever and it is but you know it, it, like you said if you're living your life for other people that's just a recipe for internal dysfunction because your soul or whatever you want to call it knows inherently what you're meant to be doing and what you personally enjoy like i know guys that live in a small surf town they work a few hours a week at a cafe and then they just surf the rest of the time and that's what they love doing and you know long term who knows if that's the best uh plan but i know that they'll be happy as long as they can just get out in the water on a surfboard uh every day and you know that's that's their life and i think the other side of it is in yourself not to judge other people for not enjoying or wanting to do the things that you want to do like if you there's a lot of mental judgment that comes like if you see people wearing different clothes and you and like the default is like to you know almost lash out at them like oh bro he just looks so stupid in wearing that clothes it's like that that use of your mental energy is so stupid and you know have your own interests and have your own things that you enjoy but other people just you know if you want everyone to live on their own terms or whatever then they're going to have other interests and it doesn't matter that it's not the same as yours and to re eliminate that kind of egoic mindset where if, so if because it's a it's a reflection of that challenging your own yep. That's what beliefs I was just say. and it's projection yeah it's always yeah. projection and it's like you know if it if you really yeah exactly you know people that are people that are doing themselves they don't have time they don't have time or the energy to even you either you either agree with it or you ignore it you know and i mean there's obviously yeah. there's there's times where there's you need to say something or whatever like it's i'm not saying you can never be negative but yeah for the 90th yeah. percentile of your life you should probably just if it's not positive just you shouldn't even see it you know you'll see it but just look past it yeah you shouldn't say it for sure and and it's and it's funny too yeah. because i think we were talking about um you know people not doing things because of you know whether it's doubt or their fan, how, someone's opinion of them i think another thing that people get that a thing that gets lost is people people do it's not just negative right people get people get lost and they don't do the things they want to because of positivity as well you know they get they get too attached to to the praise or the positive things they've done and that holds them back i think mm -hmm. a lot of times you know that they they get, they gloat or they get used to the amount of success that they have and and that almost becomes a certain amount of fear because now they're 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 playing defense rather than offense in their own life yeah yeah uh something that comes to mind for me is a guy that messaged me <clears throat> just asking for advice and he said hey man um i'm working this management consultant job pulling in six figures you know i'm successful by every metric uh that people said or my parents said i should think you know i'm earning good money i'm in a good job quote unquote but i'm fucking you know i'm i'm not happy with it i'm stressed by it i'm like i have this other opportunity for a job that'll give me way more free time but it's less money what should i do and i think well dude you know what you have to do or you know what you want to do inherently like you're obviously not happy with where you are but because you're taking a pay cut that it, one it's your own biological self being like oh we're going to have less resources in the long term so you have that kind of pull uh from that but also maybe just the because you are somewhat attached to that idea of you making more money in this prestigious position that is viewed as like oh i'm successful because i'm working in a fucking you know 
PwC or one of those big corporations, um, and like you said, they're attached to the success, and everyone's you know their parents are proud of them or whatever. So that is a force that again makes them not do what they inherently feel is right like his body was breaking down you know he's stressed to the nines every single time he's going into work and working from home and all the rest and it's like yeah that's you know one way to do it but i don't think it's sustainable long term and especially like i'm pretty sure that's why we have such huge rates of depression in the western world now is because we've become so attached to the individual and you know we praise probably the wrong values uh in western society as a whole um so being attached to that success that's not a corollary of your personal version of success um you know there's dissonance there yeah i mean i mean because i've i've been there you know it's funny because i think back right when i right when i dropped out of college is right when i found you know money twitter and and really too it's funny because i i remember i like a few of the guys on there like i dm'd or would ask questions and it was the same thing like i knew what had to be done you know it was just yeah it's it's crazy how it really is just like a it's a perspective shift and i think the the only cure is you just need to detect and i guess i'm lucky because i you know i i made that call when i was 20 right i don't have kids i don't have family like pretty pretty yeah it, i pretty much can't lose like worst case scenario You're i go back do you and want. works yeah i work some stupid job wherever and just like eat eat chicken thighs and sleep on the couch or whatever like it, it's, it's, you can't really lose i guess in that <laughs> scenario i just keep lifting and eating chicken and bare bones in it out but like yeah the, the cure is really just <laughs> man I, I wish i could just instill like so many people have so um, like amazing talent and they and i think it's funny too because i think the the people that doubt it the most are actually the most talented in a lot of cases and i wish i, I don't know mm. what the fix is and it definitely is you know part of that western status society but man if if you're listening to this fucking believe in yourself you know because it's the time, the, the, the thing about it is you just have to realize, and this is what eventually clicked for me. I was just like, okay, I can keep doing things half ass and, and wishing and wishing and wishing, or, you know, either way, the time's going to pass, right? Like, and you're just, you're yeah. eventually you're going to run out. And so fucking believe in yourself and send it now because you'll, you like you, you never regret doing something. You never regret it ever. Yeah. And what's the worst the case scenario that happens? You know what? Like, you you lose everything. Okay, like, you, so you lost everything. Now you, that I think that's actually one of the most freeing things because that's you know really when I when I left school, I I felt like I was at a personal rock bottom. Like I felt like a failure, and it was actually the most freeing thing ever because once you once you like ruin what everybody thinks about you. Like if everyone thinks you're a loser everybody dislikes you you only have friends to gain right <laughs> yeah you can only exactly. go up <clears throat> and it's yeah man that's yeah it's it's funny like i when i first studied i applied for the you know graduate jobs that i was meant to apply for and <clears throat> I, did, I got a few like interviews, um, you know, go through the processes there. But the whole time, I knew inherently in myself, like I was just BSing. I was pretending that I was like, but yeah, I really want to work for your company, man. Like, uh, I just, I, I live and breathe for the corporate world, and um, I just, I really want to, you know, solve problems for your company. Um, but I knew it was just bullshit and I knew it probably came across that it was bullshit because it wasn't authentic in any way, really. I was just doing it because, you know, I, I needed a job at the time. Um, I ended up not being able to get any first round offers for graduate jobs, so I felt like a failure as well. Um, 
I probably didn't have, well, I know that I didn't have the marks that I could have got um, in, my, in my degree uh, because I was, you know, enjoying myself too much and lazy with my study. Uh, but, you know, when I, I had to take a job because I had, I was moving out of home, I had like, you know, two weeks worth of rent in my bank account. Um, and there. I was like, fuck it. I got to take it. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, um, that will teach you a lot about, um, yourself. Um, a lot of stress, probably my main source of stress for years was living paycheck to paycheck in a, in a way, um, you know, never really being above a thousand dollars in my bank account for a long time because I was either studying or, or studying and paying rent and working as a security guard. So I was working in nightclubs, kicking people out, uh, working till like 4 a.m., 6 a.m., which is not a good time if you're into, you know, health and wellness like I am. Um, but night shift will tell you a lot. Again, I learned a lot from the job, uh, but I had to take whatever job was there because I didn't have any money. Um, so for a long time, it was like, well, fuck, this is what I have to do for now. Uh, I made the mindset shift of, you know, whatever job you're doing, do a great job. I think that's a, a good mindset to have, even if you think the job is below you or whatever, which I did. Um, just do the best job that you can um, in what you're doing. And people recognize that. And I think I, you know, became relied upon as like a good bouncer or whatever. You know, I was never the guy that was going to start fights and I would always try and, and what I did was usually talk people out the door without laying a finger on them, which I think also taught me a lot about you know, stoically controlling my own emotions. If someone's drunk and yelling in your face and calling you a fucking loser and like, oh, how could you do this to me? You know, I've spent so much money here tonight and you're kicking me out. It's like, you have to have such a internal control of your ego and, you know, being abused that eventually that stuff just, you know, ran off my back like water off a duck's yeah. back. You know, it's just like, yep, okay. Um, and that taught me a massive life lesson of you cannot be given offense. You can only take offense from other people. So, you know, two different situations. Someone can come up to me drunk, wasted. I know they have to leave. Um, I know I, they need to come out the door um, and they can abuse me and I can go, oh, what, dude? No. And then I can arc up at them uh, because I'm like upset that they called me a pussy or whatever. Or I can the same the other person says the exact same thing to me and i can go okay they're upset that i'm quote unquote ruining their night uh they're drunk they can't be here but they're gonna abuse me regardless because they're upset they're not angry at me they're just upset at the situation and they and i'm the focal point for that i'm the target for them mm -hmm. so not taking it personally about anything you know and that you know, that's one of the four agreements, uh, a book I just read, you should read it if you haven't read it, but one of the agreements is don't take anything personally. Uh, I think a lot of people do that on Twitter. They'll read something like a, an opinion that someone posted on a tweet and they'll go, oh, what, that's wrong, you know, because it offends their own sensibilities and they take it personally. They think that is an attack on me. Whereas it's, it's not an attack on you. That person probably didn't even think of you on, you know, maybe they'll think of you for, 20 seconds when they see a tweet of yours and then they'll never think of you again for the next few months but you can take offense to what they've said because you're applying it to your own life and you're s sensitive to yeah. it and that is a lot of people's mental distresses they take things personally and I think the job that I worked as a bouncer well I know that that taught me a lot with that and so I'm grateful for the fact that I did do that job for a long time even though it was I know not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It wasn't like a career thing, but it enabled me to work on the weekends while I was studying and, um, you know, provided for myself and taught me a lot of things. So that's an example of what we were talking about earlier is no matter what you're doing, there are things to be learned um, and you should always take advantage of that. Yeah, and I mean, just in general, you know, <clears throat> doing, doing everything the best you can, if you don't, it degrades your soul a little bit. 
you know you just you just lose yes. you lose yes. part of your integrity and and it's it's just like when you do something that you know is bad for you or you know you, whatever it might be you just you just lose part of your soul and so that you should do, do it just for that reason alone and it's it's funny yeah. what you said about you know with the bouncers and with or with people will get upset about tweets i think that you know you should be that your harshest as much as you should like you should love yourself at least this is how i think right like you should love yourself unconditionally but you should also be your harshest critic you know if i see something and i it, sometimes it happens a lot that's funny you said that like i'll see stuff on twitter and where i could it, it, i apply it to my own life but then i'm like damn is that true and if so like that how, how can i improve from that you know is you can use that to yeah. you can either you, can get, aff- you can get offended by it but guess what dude sometimes like shit's true and you can use that to improve at least that's what I, I at least that's how i think about it you know you should be your harshest critic like no one and that and that also too you don't respond you don't respond to other people's negativity when you already understand you know if if you can point out your own flaws people lose the power to use them against you you know you know what they are you made peace with them like you can either if it's something you can change great change it and most things are things that people can change i think that's a and it's especially in the health space you know it blows my mind how how mainstream the idea of of statusism is you can change everything you can change everything about yourself about your life like it it, you really can and so it's like so most things, you know, if it offends you, you probably have some work to do rather than getting, you could displace that energy into something positive rather than negative. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's a delicate balance between, you know, you don't want to take every dipshit's opinion yes. on your thing. Like it has to come from within, but it is a useful tool. If someone says something, if it's from someone that you respect uh if it offends you then there is likely something within you that it upsets you because it 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 puts a mirror on you and maybe it's it's not an image of yourself that you like because you know inherently that you're not doing your best in that realm or whatever that's why people will if someone posts a physique picture and they look really good and then you you always see a few people that are like oh yeah uh, wish i had all the time to go to the gym or, or whatever and you know i can't eat that way because blah 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 it's yeah it's I mean, just a reflection on themselves and they because they're not happy with their own self so they attack others yeah that's just pure loser cope i don't even i don't i don't, I don't even read <laughs> that to be honest with you that's just like no of course <laughs> not yeah so it was i mean but but even things like i'll just quickly say that like uh something that you see some you know, mindsets you see on the internet is, um, you know, the mentality that face is all that matters. Your fa- your literal facial aesthetics are malleable. Oh, yeah. You can promote jaw posture, you know, mewing. You can increase your testosterone. You can improve the mass of the muscle on mm-hmm. your jaw. Just living healthily. Also living authentically and being honest with yourself and true to yourself. That in turn transforms the body itself which is going to improve your attractiveness Mm -hmm. also your energy in in that sense is attractive to other people when someone is authentically living their own uh life like people respect that people respect the guy that just does fucking doesn't give a fuck and lives life on his own terms even if it's not necessarily what's cool or whatever like people inherently respect that um, and I think when you're doing that, the relationships that c- you create and the people you meet are ultimately going to be better relationships because you're putting out your true self. So the people attracted to that self are going to be people that you mesh with better. And if you're putting out a false image of yourself, the people that are attracted to that an image, you know, inherently aren't actually the people that you're meant to be hanging out with or the people that you... <laughs> should have in your life so again it comes back to that dissonance between internally knowing what you want but the life you're living is not a reflection of that and that's where people i think get a lot uh, a lot of anger and, and misery 
due to that. Yeah, and I think, and with all these things too, you know, you <clears throat> talked about mewing and, and all that, that stuff's amazing. You know, you really can change a lot about how you mm. look and, but it really, I, I think you can, I think, you know, your outlook, even just, even beyond just the energy, you know, I think when you genuinely have a, a pure, authentic, you know, genuine outlook on life, I think that changes your face shape 100%. Uh, I, like, I think you look, you objectively yeah. look more attractive when you when you embody that. I yeah. think that's 100% true. And people will say, oh, that's not, that's not, but it really is. And, and the thing about things it like is. that is you can't, you can't, like, a lot of people will probably hear that, and especially if it rubs the wrong, or maybe they have some sort of like trauma associated with it. They won't know that until they experience it, and you really have to experience it because it's so true. And it's just, and it's just it, the other thing yeah. too is like, once you get to that point, you also don't care, you know, like you're just you you care mm-hmm. for you, but you don't care for for anyone else's sort of thoughts on the matter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, an example of that is, you know, <laughs> on Lobo's recommendation, I was wearing barefoot shoes before, but they were the ones that didn't have the, you know, the separate toes. But now I have those ones because, and I mm-hmm. love them. You know, they feel really good and they f- I recommend everyone get some. Um, but it is one of the things that people will roast you for, you know, just because they look relatively silly or whatever. You know they're not the cool Nike Jordans or Uh whatever, but if you own it and you you know you don't necessarily have to defend yourself, but you know if someone roasts you, roast yourself as well. Like yeah, I look silly, whatever. Like you like like you were saying, you take away that power from other people when you when you show that it doesn't get to you. um, This is a tip that I use. Um, I, I was you know bullied a little bit at school just by dickheads that bullied everyone. Uh, but when I was like trying to defend myself and was like, oh, no, no, no. And like you would justify or try to explain why you were doing things you were doing. And that holds so much more power over you than just the also roasting yourself and, you know, just showing that it doesn't get to you. And once you, sh- it's like, you can't take, you can only take offense. It's that same idea the power of other people's words is entirely up to you. If you get upset by other people's words, you can just let that go and take that away from them. And then they can't, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt mm-hmm. me. Once you make that mental distinction internally to not let other people's words define your reality. And it goes back to that, uh, the agreements thing. Uh, and I have been talking about it a lot recently because it's such a apt description of some of the mental distress that we feel is like someone else's agreement that they give to you is like you're uncool because blah 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 and if you internalize that then that has power over you but if you just reject it you don't agree to that summation of your character or whatever then that just disappears and then you're much more happier because of it yeah and that's and it it goes back to you know and i'm glad you said don't let other people's words define your reality because like I said, I think so many people, they they allow others praise. Like, don't let, like, yes, obviously, like, f- like fuck the negativity, right? Like, you just got to let that roll off your back. But don't get caught up in others' praise. Don't. I, I think that's a bad thing. I think you should be completely immune. I think you should just do whatever you want, you know? I don't think, you know, obviously, like, if someone says something nice to you, like, you, it's not like you have to be a dick to them or... Or disregard it like you can take compliments but don't get caught up in that because it again it's just it's just yeah. steering you away from who you should be and i think who you should be who you are is always it's just it's always going to be the most powerful asset you have because there you can't replicate it who you are you can't yeah. replicate it yeah there's no one else like you and i think that's also another point to mention in terms of like your what what you have to give to the world discovering that discovering your innate strengths and what you enjoy and enjoy learning about and enjoy talking about is usually what you have or in the realm of what you have to offer the world and once you 
go internal and really meditate on that and have life experience to kind of figure out what it is that you're good at that is where your best career path comes from um whatever that is you know don't and if that is practicing law or working in finance or that is something that you really enjoy and are good at you know that's not to be sniffed at either just because it's not counterculture to what is the predominant way of thinking like if that's what you really enjoy you know I I have doctor friends who have gone through the whole med school situation and you know studied heats for that and now they're phenomenal doctors and they'll change a lot of lives and help people and you know it's it's like don't discount what you're good at just because it is the mainstream view as well that's something to mention um and I, th- I think, so, I, think yeah, the, I, mean, I think a big part of it, right? And part of it is, you know, the modern world's just broken, right? There's, there's more to like money, money, money is great and all that stuff, you know, and there is some objective merit to the value you create in the world and money does reflect that. But at the same time, like yeah. basing everything off, off monetary value is so broken, you know, just, just the idea of like, think about, let's say to 3000 years ago, you know, it was, it was so much more primal, right? You had to, you had to scope out where you're going to live or or five, however many years ago, right? Before we had the civilization we know today, you had to, you know, get food, you had to build shelter, you had to form some sort of community relationship, whatever it might be. But then other than that, you weren't worried about, you know, how you can run up a milli you had hobbies and you had, you know, yeah. and outlets and you were just you. And I, and I, the way I look at it is, is I think a lot of people need to get back in touch with, you know, and this, I talk a lot about like Neville Goddard and, and people like that. And I really believe in that stuff. It really changed my life, honestly. But I think about it, how I, how I think about it for me is I think about nine year old Logan, right? And I think about what he would have done. And so, for example, one one thing with that was is music, right? Music's something that I've always loved. I've always been musically inclined. I used to freaking shred guitar yeah. when I was like ten, but then I got older, yeah. and and you just you fall into these. There, it you know, music didn't make me money, or it didn't get the grades that I needed, or it didn't fulfill other people. Like, it just didn't have the the sort of transactional value that we really place so much value on. But when I think back to who I am, you know, that's a big, I love it, you know? And so I just went and got got a freaking setup. Just, I'm kind of in flux right now because I'm moving here in a couple weeks. But like, you just need, I think people need to think back to who they were at at seven or eight. And I think you can find a lot of value in that. You know, you're naturally drawn, your curiosity is naturally pick to and it just it really just comes back to getting to that pure you know creator state if you will of just who like the natural it's not even you it's not even you actually really it's the the ether or whatever the fuck you want to call it you know it's it it, you're harnessing that energy it's flowing out of you it's just it's just natural and i think the more you can cultivate that and there's a lot of ways to do it you know you got to look back through and there's probably a lot of like trauma or just there could be a million things but you need to go back and figure out what stopped you from being whoever you wanted to be and then start embodying that because i think for a lot of people they'll find a lot of truth in that like you naturally just are who you want to be and then you get pulled away from it because it doesn't make money or it doesn't get you girls or it doesn't make you cool or it's, it's just i don't know yeah uh as a child you're inherently are who you Mm -hmm. are and then society whether it's your parents or friends or the media conditioning or whatever it is beats it out of you uh unfortunately and you know kids are the perfect representation of how we have the potential to be there's there's no you know and it is a bit of pressure because as you get older, you do have to worry about other things like, you know, paying your rent, paying your bills, but it's just a, one of those things that end up conditioning you to not be who you're going to be. So 
I think there's a few things that you need to kind of sort out, uh, whether that's your health, you know, you're not going to be able to really pursue any meaningful creative endeavors if your health is shit and you feel like shit all the time. So that's one of the boxes you have to tick. You have to figure out a way that your bills are taken care of, um, way to get food, whatever it is, you have your base level needs taken care of and that requires some work and some finessing in order to do. Uh, once you have those things taken care of, then you do have a bit more of flexibility and time or just the capacity to delve into yourself and uh, connect more to that innate source of knowledge. It's like, I always kind of think to myself, like, what is this? What is Solbra really? Where did that come from? I don't really know. Like that's, <laughs> it's the, the source or whatever you want to call it is acting through yeah. me. Uh, when I sit down to write, it's not necessarily or, or tweet or whatever. It's like, I'm not like I'm sitting down and I'm thinking, okay, what is it that I can share today? And then boom, it comes to me. It's not, it's not like a conscious process in that. And we sp I spoke about this with, um, with Lobo previously. It's like, I think our brains and bodies are some kind of receiver for this innate source knowledge, which acts through yes. us. It's not, I think um, <clears throat> that's the kind of distinction that comes from realizing that the ego is not you. You are that which is like, reacting to whatever thoughts come into your head and thoughts you don't have a you don't have control of what thoughts come into your head that's just what happens and we can delve further into that with like whether you believe we have free will because i know like very smart people like sam harris like he doesn't believe that we have free will because he thinks that whatever thoughts are popping into your head that eventually coagulate and make you act a certain way it's like we don't have control over those thoughts which and the thoughts that you know eventually lead you to take a certain course of action so how can you say that people are responsible for their actions in that whatever thoughts are coming to your head are going to influence you to act a certain way uh and i think i don't know i don't know the answer i don't know if we have free will or not um i think that's, that's a too broad of a concept for anyone yeah to say. that's a that's what do you think i don't like, know man that's a rabbit yeah. hole like <laughs> I, I hear what you're I saying, but I mean, I, I have a tough time co-signing that we don't have free will just because then at that point, you know, like at that point that, that opens up, that opens up the Pandora's <laughs> box of like, you know, opens up a serial of... killer. Did you like, you had the free yeah. will to not do that. It's not, like, I, 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 th I think we do have free will. But did you? <laughs> That's, do you know what I mean? Like. If, if I was, you know, a bad dude serial you watch, killer... You watched not, American you know, Psycho too many anything, times. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to rewatch that. I haven't watched it in a while. I haven't either, but um, it's funny because you said that and you got the you got the Bateman flow rocking, so it's like... Really <laughs> I'm getting that more often these days, which is uh, I'm trying to pretty keep, nice, I'm just, not going to lie. I'm trying he's, to a good, he's a good looking dude. I'm trying to catch up to you, yeah. brother. Trying. Yeah. You just got to not go for a haircut for months it's very simple <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i i do think i do think we have free will honestly i think it's uh i think the more here's you know what i actually think i think that works like this right i think the more you embody and this is kind of quasi religious spiritual very meta whatever like i think the more you embody that have you ever seen the chart where it's, it's the consciousness chart you know and as you go up that mm -hmm. i think the more very I, I think that you the more you embody upwards on that trend i think the more free will you have right i that's kind of as i'm thinking yeah. about that i think that's how it works i think the more yeah like i think very negative low energy like those kind of people i think they have less free will over their lives and it really comes in, a, yeah. and this is kind of, you know, cons I guess getting into the conspiracy realm of things too. But the, like the lower energy you have, the more you're gonna be, the more you're gonna feed into the quote unquote matrix, right? 
and you're gonna your life is gonna end up just being run by and people talk about oh the the simulation that like that's real but it's I don't I think it's real but I also don't think it's you know some crazy alien computer chip realm right I think it's just the laws it's just how nature works you know the more the more energy that you have and the more you can radiate that and harness it the more free will you're going to have to do things that you want to do and to create things and I think that it's just it's cyclical yeah. like that that would be my that's my take yeah. at least well, thinking about it on the spot yeah I mean the low vibrational mindsets so fear jealousy anger despair all those kinds of things which if you are in that cycle and you let yourself kind of dwell in that realm which i think unless you're born with just that inherent high vibrational mindset like a lot of people experience that when and that shows itself in if they see someone doing well they want to bring that person down because it reflects in themselves like they're jealous of that person's success um, they're scared of taking their own leap of faith or whatever um, and I think you're right in that when you do the work to break those internal chains and recognize in yourself when those egoic notions rear their head and one of the big things is not letting the emotions like take hold of you so you may feel an emotion come into your head like anger what you should do is recognize what has triggered that anger in you wait a second recognize it as this external thing that's just popped into your head and then let it go that's what you can do with practice mm -hmm. and it is a practice thing in terms it's like a skill almost to recognize the thought as just a thought that's come into your head and recognize that you are different you are separate to that thought so you don't have to go down the rabbit hole of thinking like oh, fuck this dude he's made me angry you know blah 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 or if it's jealousy like you start internally thinking like oh he's only that way because of this and i'm not that way because i've got these limiting factors or whatever that is all a low energy low vibrational mindset which doesn't get you anywhere in life because so much of your mental energy is taken up by creating these fake bullshit reasons why you can't do something or why someone else is doing something and that therefore you should want to bring them down that like you said once you are given the mental software to realize that that shit isn't real then you can go okay i'm gonna stop worrying about that stuff and this is a path that i went down you know so much more of my mind was opened up to do creative things or whatever when you're not worrying about other people when you're not worrying about all the bullshit then it's like you have an extra 50 percent of your brain available and you can then harness that to show love to other people to spread the message that we try and give to other people and break people out of that mindset which is that toxic hell mentality which some people can spend their whole lives in and never get out of it if they've never been taught how to get out of it and that's the other thing is that anyone is capable of this and anyone is capable of improving their mindset and breaking those chains if you become aware of what all of it is and you take a deep hard look at yourself and it is going to be hard you know it's not easy to look at yourself honestly and see where you've gone wrong and see where you can improve and you know honestly think like oh shit that wasn't very good of me to do you know that's tough that's tough to like you said be your own harshest critic and like that's not to like beat yourself up for it um you know again the past is the past and you shouldn't you know wallow in the the years that you've spent in that mindset it's done but now do the best you can you're still going to feel anger you're still going to feel jealousy you're still going to feel sad don't beat yourself up for that but once you take that first step and you make that distinction of okay i can change my life myself i can change the mindset that i have and you know reduce my anger and all of that then the sky's the limit and you can just raise your vibration raise your internal mindset to the point where you can do anything you want honestly
yeah man and it's that's it's such a powerful thing you know and you touched on a lot of stuff there it, you know one thing that it's it's funny you know you talk about sometimes you know you talk about like detaching from the anger or realizing it's there and then taking a second you know it's funny because sometimes and I think that objectively that's probably best I think the the closer you can be to your center the better but it's sometimes I kind of like to ride the lightning too, you know, sometimes it's really great to, cause I think, I think too, if it's a balance, you know, I think if you're too, if you're too in control of your emotions, you actually lose out on a little bit of life. Like for me, sometimes I kind of like to, to ride the, the roll. Cause I feel like too, my best, you know, and I guess this is kind of like a, this is kind of, it's when I get into my most creative mind is when I'm like, really high up but for when i but a lot of times when i do that it some sort of a slump follows it you know but i don't know so it's 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 interesting yeah. because part of me part of me is almost like a glutton for punishment in the sense of i'll take that because i love like getting in the mode where i'm just i just have like there will be nights where it's it's 9 p.m and it's i call it like tapping in right like you just get in this mode where everything you do you just you just can't miss you're just locked in you know but but there's mm. there seems to be flow state go ahead what were you gonna say flow state oh flow yeah state. Ex- flow state exactly like that is my drug you know i i like i yeah. live for that feeling but it's funny because there's generally a sort of and, and i think the the frustration in the the lapse or like the the down from it you know comes it it, it comes from just not being in that and that's like that's what i'm chasing but i don't think you can get there being it's tough it's a tough concept because you probably end up hurting yourself long term you know you want to have a a balanced but i don't know if i would say i am very i'm not i don't know if i'm a proponent too much of the stoicism because i really like that flow state is what I live for, you know, that just feeling of pure presence and energy. And when it's there, it's like, it's amazing. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of my ethos too, you know, the high energy, like just, just locked in. And I love that. And I live for that. Like if I could feel that 24 hours a day, I don't think I would even have to eat, honestly. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, it's both. It's again, it's like, you don't want to take one idea of never feel your emotions never express your emotions like that is not stoicism in a way it's like you want to recognize the negative emotions that are not going to benefit you and are only going to harm yourself and harm your body recognize them as you know what they are acknowledge that sometimes you will feel those but don't let them dictate your actions that's the distinction you know that's not to say never experience high energy never experience passion never experience those things you know the spices of life because that shit is like you're saying the best parts of life when you feel high on life and you're like you're in the moment and you're creating and you just fucking yes let's go you know it's like whoa <laughs> that stuff is good yeah and that's what you want but it you know it's like you take the good parts of stoicism that will help you and then you leave the parts that will make you, you know, boring, emotionless, passionless. Like, you also don't want that. But, again, there's like a little asterisk on everything because you also don't want to let the massive positive winds dictate your actions because that can also sometimes, you know, if you're overzealous with a business idea and you don't particularly think of the negatives all the time, um, that's like a it's a harm reduction strategy. You have to think of the ways that things can go wrong in order to plan against them. Uh, If you never feel anything wrong and it's like, okay, my business is losing money and and you're like, oh, it doesn't matter, bro. I don't feel fucking emotions. (laughs) Obviously, that's too stupid. Uh, So it is a balance and it is just a question of developing these emotional skills to benefit you but then at the same time recognizing you are human you're going to feel emotions the good ones that come through express those and feel them but don't let it dictate your life and always have that overarching thing of you know it is an emotion i am 
the watcher of my emotions i am i am not the emotion um so you know like everything there's always an asterisk there's always look at both sides um but yeah yeah and i think you know when you get into that and i know and lobo touched on this man he's a he's a tough he's a tough follow i will say that but it's it's funny because he talked he talked he <laughs> talked about designing your life you know and 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 get you you have you really do have to work backwards right and and that's something yeah. i did a long time ago and it was after i because i i found all the like i went into kind of the esoterica and all that stuff like i looked into that mainly because i wanted like i found that stuff out of ego you know like i found that stuff out of being 19 and seeing dudes that were you know driving a freaking ferrari and doing all this shit and walking around with smoking chicks or whatever like i i I looked into that stuff because i thought it was going to be the hack to me getting all the the material things quicker you know or as a a way to bypass just doing the work which obviously it doesn't doesn't work like that but you know yeah. what it did do is so i i did that like i have a i have a long running note i actually have like i'm actually kind of addicted to the notes in my phone it's probably a problem but so i i so, have actually i did this so many like i've written out my life top to bottom probably 30 times in the past year like four pages of your future life just just it's i don't even look at it as my future life anymore i just look at it as my life and I am that person, mm-hmm. and it's if I don't have yeah. like I embody it, and then maybe I don't have every single inch, but I am that person, you know. Um, but yeah, and I think that's that's really how you find your center, you know. And it, and it's so funny because I'll have days where I'm like stressed out or something's going wrong, and the more you just repeat that body of work, the more it ingrains into yourself. And so if I'm having a, a just an off day. Or I'm feeling low energy or whatever. I look back at all that and I've seen that and I've I've built it out so many times and it's like wow, I really don't have a choice but to keep going on that because I'm already this far gone, you know. And it's really it's a really powerful thing to look back. And I think that's why I think everybody should write. I think everybody should write. And it I was talking to yeah. my buddy, you know, Danny Roars. He he mentioned this too, you know, like. I think it's just it's such a healthy habit for you to get out the the things that are going through your brain because the more you can the more you can see the, how that roller coaster of the ups and the downs and all that played out for you and you saw how you got past them like the less the future ones could ever affect you because it's just it's just it's just more practice you know it's like I, I kind of think about it like this right if you're if you're playing a basketball game and you come down let me think of the right analogy here right so the first time the first time you come down in the fourth quarter of a tight basketball game it's competitive whatever it's going to freak you out you're going to be nervous you're probably going to suck you know but then you blow that first game and then the like the more playoff it's just like being an athlete the more playoff games you have under your belt the more the more times you've gone from those upper highs and those lower lows and then return back to center, the more confidence you have in just maintaining that stableness all throughout your life. And then you don't let stress bother you. Yeah, it's, it is a skill is the emotional control. And that's one of the good things about, you know, journaling your thoughts and or just writing them down in general and that's what i think is is good with twitter as well is because if like a lot of my tweets will just be a thought that's coming to my head and then i'll bah, 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 send and then that is you know it, it, it almost gets sent out into the world because and then, and then it leaves your mind in a way um and sometimes i'll go back on my tweets and read them and kind of meditate them on them a bit more but i think it's such a good outlet for that if you're not writing is just to tweet your thoughts <clears throat> because you never know when that shit's going to resonate with someone you know mm-hmm. even if it doesn't go viral doesn't get a lot of likes or whatever there could be some person that reads that and goes oh fuck you know whether it it puts into perspective something that they've thought but haven't been able to like 
externalize mm-hmm. in words yeah. um you know tweets that uh, sometimes i've had a tweet where someone said dude this kicked me out of my depression and like holy fuck that was a message i received and i was like shit like one tweet that you might not think has you know impact on people and whether or not people like it it's like there are a lot of people viewing it behind the scenes that if it doesn't get the twitter recognition or whatever there might be someone that that resonates with um and that's the power of twitter in itself it's like you have a bit of mental software that you can share with the world and then it you know spreads to other people and helps other people and i think that's the best use of it um social media in general but things like writing your life down on what you want to achieve like for instance if you want my my dream life let's let's just go into our dream lives a little bit right yeah i want to be able to eventually live on some kind of beautiful house that i've designed myself there's a sauna there's a cold plunge pool my friends are living nearby maybe there's like a shared facility where we can all train together somewhere on the beach yep. you know that kind of shit excites me and that's what i want to design for my five year ten year plan um obviously set up businesses that you know will enable some kind of income that i don't have to work day to day on it and then you can kind of just work on the things that you're passionate about that's what i want eventually what do i need to do today in order to facilitate that um and like you said when you really sit down and construct that and ask yourself what what do do i actually want because a lot of people don't do that so they drift they drift they work in a job that they don't necessarily want to do but that's not the worst thing to do is working in a job because you need to make money that's a fact you need to live you need to eat food pay rent but if you're not also working to design the life that you want and the relationships that you want eventually then you're just going to drift and you're never going to achieve that so um, a massive thing for people to do is sit down put your phone away turn off your computer pen and paper what do i want my life to look like in five years 10 years 20 years and once you have that and honestly say that to yourself without any external influences that's when you can design a plan to or goals to get there and the simple fact of writing it out almost like sends a shockwave through the universe that things start moving behind the scenes for you to help you and benefit you Uh, i think there's definitely something to that is like once you take those steps internally to design your own life and make the steps like take the steps yourself honestly and start putting in work to it whether or not i think there's like obviously the work that you're doing is going to progress you to that goal but also there's the energetic side of it the esoteric side of it where life starts to or the universe starts to reward you for taking that initial step and taking that plunge because otherwise you just drift and kind of let external things dictate your life and then you again you just cycle into a life that you don't really feel passionate about and then you become depressed and blah 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 dude it's it's honestly pretty creepy because i have i have i have like probably three or four notebooks filled up now but i remember i have i have day and this is back when i lived in clearwater florida like probably you know february or march 2019 um but I have things that I can go to the page and I have things now that I I can point, I can literally look at the sentence where I wrote out, I have X, Y, Z, and now I have it. And it's really like once you, and because too, and you talked about, you know, how the universe rewards you for that. The universe rewards you for that. Like things become real as much as you believe in them, you know? And so the more the more that you believe the the energy you put out kind of creates your reality the more true that's going to be it's it's the observer effect it's yeah. it's just how things work placebo yeah placebo but like you should like it, but it's true it works and I don't know why I don't know how but it just it just happens and it's it's really crazy and a couple other things too you know you talked on on Twitter and it's and that's honestly it's I started tweeting because it was like a cool space. Well, it really helped me out. You know, I, I've kind of, my whole pretty much entrepreneurship has been with me on Twitter, you know, and there's 
probably eight or nine months where I had 400 followers and 300 of them I already knew from my hometown or growing up or whatever. But like Twitter has been instrumental in me becoming an entrepreneur and doing all these things. And, and it's really crazy because it, like you said, you know, people messaging you that your, your, just your thoughts have made a positive impact in their lives is extremely gratifying like it's it's very rewarding and it it's very it's the best it's the it's the best like they're really if you're if you base your life on and this is really the sauce you know this is what it comes down to if you base your life off making other people happy and not in the sense you're making them happy like you know what we talked about earlier with you know their opinions of you but like yeah, yeah, yeah. you're genuinely helping people like that is the best place you can be and yeah. you will never run out of energy ever you know, you, you have yeah. doing, and we think we want to do these things because we want all these material things. You know, you talked about your, your dream life and we have very similar values and we'll get into that with, with the island and all the ideas <laughs> there here, here in a little yeah. bit. But like, we think we want all these things, but what are you going to do once you have them? You know, like, like when I have my pearl white iridescent finish. 911 with some smooth interior like <laughs> yeah that's great but I, I still have to like and it goes back to responsibility too you know we think that we want all this freedom and we do we want the freedom but it, it, it would get very dull like how I don't know how long I could just go lifting and surfing which I don't know how to surf but I really want to learn because you know it's just mm. it's just in my blood I'm, I'm the heir of Atlantis I think but <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. But see, it's placebo. I'm gonna tell myself I'm the heir of Atlantis until it's real. But yeah, but you're gonna be the one to rediscover it, mate. No, the, the, what my what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna build on top of the water. The 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 next flood's gonna come, and we're just gonna build real estate on top of the water. <laughs> but uh, well, an island is pretty much yeah, there. basically. I love the ocean though. Like that's we're getting off into a tangent here, but it, like if that if that's yeah, yeah. real quick though, because I I actually do enjoy this. Like because I love Elon. Like Elon's the, like who I look up to as an entrepreneur. There's other guys obviously, but Elon's fucking sick. Plus yeah. I also just yeah admire the fact that he says whatever the fuck he wants. He doesn't care. He 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 just lets it rip. You can at that point, yeah. right? You hope that like that's the thing with like. You know, I'm not obviously one to, not going to judge how people live their live their lives. But if you have tens of millions of dollars, fucking live with a bit of pizzazz and just do things differently because you can. You know, wear a fucking Versace robe uh, wherever you want and say what you want on Twitter, like he does. You know, it's. I wouldn't want to be a businessman with lots of money and then just wear a suit all the time and go to fucking meetings and. You know, like Warren Buffett lives in his the house that he's lived for, you know, for ages since you know for thirty years or whatever in a small house. And I'm sure he has holiday houses. And yeah. I, that's like a PR move or whatever, um, and that can be respected to a degree. Uh, you know, living humbly and all the rest of it. But yeah, I think you know if I was in that position, man, just fucking be inspirational in a way and just you know don't live that necessarily. Just don't live by the book in a way. That's what I would do anyway small that's what you're gonna that's what you're gonna do <laughs> that's what i'm going there you to go do. yes but yeah man and but go anyway going so just the because i went off on a tangent there and we kind of got off topic but yeah so that's if when we talk about like i, I want to be like if, like when i'm 40 you know i've got sitting on all kinds of money like elon's doing the whole space thing i want to figure out the ocean the ocean's mm. so sweet to me like it's yeah. so interesting because we really know yeah. nothing about it you know, we really know nothing about mm. it, which is insane. And it's yeah. 75% of the planet. But yeah, as we, as yeah. we go back, like you can only, you know, you, I could only just lift and, and surf and fuck around and drink mojitos and go out and try to swoop as much to as I point. can. Like I could probably do that for a month and then I would go insane. I would go insane because yeah. there has to be, there has to be some sort of construction there has to be a game right and that's it has to there be has work. there has to be work and so if there's going to be work you're going to go insane without the work right and so if you have yeah. to work 
the more you can do it to a degree where you're making other people's lives better, I think the better your life will be. And it's funny because as soon as you as 100%. soon as you flip but the frame with that, it's like the goal you know, is not to retire on a beach forever. It's to be able to make enough money so that you don't have to work on things that don't interest you or things that to be able to work on things that you think are inherently valuable and like I said changing people's lives that's mm -hmm. the goal and not having to do it on anyone else's terms so that you can just take a week off and go visit family whenever you want um i think spiritually it's such a massive thing to have the freedom and not be able to not have to fucking put in a request to hr to be like can i please have some time off to you know go visit my dad like fuck that irks me and it that's why i eventually obviously moved out of uh, full-time office work for a multitude of reasons one of them being you know sitting indoors all day looking at a computer screen and i do it that to a degree now but it's the same you can do the same thing but with different energetic consequences because it's on your own terms and i think that's so fucking good yeah a hundred percent i, I want to i mean i cut you off talking about lifestyle say. design like no you're fine um I, we were talking about you know lifestyle design too you know i want to get to the point where and this is i think the best way to do it is you know as an entrepreneur where you can if you can if you can hustle and grind at your computer you know because like dude during the day honestly i can't work during the day it's impossible for me at this point like if the sun is out i want to be outside and I want to be out walking yeah. or working out. It's it's so like if I'm gonna get work done, it has to be between, you know, I, I like getting up really early because it's just there's no distractions. But if I'm gonna work, it has to be between, yeah. you know, 4:30 a.m. to 10:30 a.m. or like yeah. 6:30 p.m. to 3 a.m. or maybe even a little bit later <laughs> than 6:30. I, I cannot work during the day because it's just there's there's things outside there's it's yeah. just, you just I, like i don't know for me at least so i want to get to the point where i can just like i think or i think a lot of people do too or maybe not but i want to get to the point where i can just think and and have you know and have people that execute that's that's where we get to eventually you know is not even touching the laptop yeah yeah because it's yeah um I think as well, I'm of that opinion. Like I wake up at around six, uh, I'll hydrate, I'll have breakfast, you know, all those things you need to do, stretch in the morning. And then it'll be, you know, the creative deep work, three or four hours where I'm every hour just getting up, doing some stretches, but the majority bulk of the work, you know, the sun's rising, it's not too hot. Mm -hmm. And then at 10 o'clock or whatever, um, you go outside, enjoy the sun, you know why do we work if not to enjoy nature you know that's one of my points is like you want to like yes hustle grind fucking do the work but also realize that your life is also every single day not just working for this eventual future point because you might get hit by a bus next year that's the reality yeah. of it um look both ways before you cross the street obviously <laughs> but it's like why would you like at the end of the day if you spend years and years and years just working at a laptop and then you don't get to experience the fruits of your labors i think it's at least for me personally it's more of creating a lifestyle around it where you can work four hours five hours a day of consistent focus work to move your business forward um or you know do consulting or whatever it is that you're doing um so that you can enjoy life because why else are you working do you yeah. know what i mean do you live to work or do you work to live and that's a distinction that i like and some people think that that's like lazy or whatever i think that's one of the internal agreements that i had to work on personally is like if i wasn't working the equivalent of a full-time job on my side business then i wasn't doing enough but to a point it's like not productive for the first part for you to sit down and not move your body for hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours like that's not where you have your best work um to like smash it out but then also have a break and let your brain kind of process behind the scenes move your body get sun all of the health benefits that that entails as well as making you more productive in those other times you do work so waking up 
hydrate, work, sun, chill, work out, eat, and then come back when the sun's setting early afternoon, um, do some more work. Like I personally, I will go to bed at 9.30 every night. I don't work till 3 a.m. like you do. Um, that's just where I'm at now. But being able to do that is one of the main reasons that I think everyone should try it. whatever it is even if you're fucking selling toilet paper to a business if you can do that from it for a few hours of work at a laptop but then also have your own time to creatively pursue what you want to pursue uh, fucking work on your body work on your health that's the aim of the game for me and it's not yeah, possible for everyone so like I know that, that yeah but no, so, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to, re, uh, you cut out for a second, so I wasn't sure if you finished. Go. So, yeah, I mean, and so just to clarify, I don't get up at 4.30 and then work from 4.30 to 10 and then and then 6 to 3 a.m. I don't sleep one hour a night every night. That would be insane. The nights the nights <laughs> I work to 3 or 4 a.m., I get up at like work harder, bro. 11, yeah. But no, so that leads into my next point, actually, because, and I was going to say this, is I think a lot of people have it backwards too, you know? Like, I think a lot of people, and I think this is why a lot of people don't make it, honestly, is because they get into the idea that success has to be hard, right? They, you know, and, mm. and yes, like I'm not, and you always have to do the work, right? But at the same time, you don't, you know, you don't, and I, especially too, because I grew up, I'm from Ohio, right? And so there's a big like, kind of midwestern gritty hard work feel yeah. to it but it's i don't even think it's like that i think is once you once you once it click like you don't hustle and like people get so caught up in the and you said this you know you, you like you have life to live you know the more you you like i feel like people actually get attached to being in the process so much that they never get to the destination and you should enjoy the journey you know mm. the, the 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 journey is the destination in the sense that you should you should enjoy every day and do all that but i think yeah. especially too you know a lot of like the young guys that want to make all this money or do these things they get so attached to how hard they think it should be or how hard they think they yeah. should work that they yeah. never get there because th like they're so emotionally attached to oh I'm hustling and grinding that you you won't it's an ego yeah, thing. you won't get there and because it's you know you can you can have one like you could learn one thing right that could change your life overnight and it and it could be that yeah. simple like as soon as it clicks for you it clicks for you and now you're a person that can make money and it really like it's I think it's kind of a limiting belief too you know people think that yeah they and i think it really comes down to them and this all goes back to being the person you want to be you know people think that they don't deserve the things that they do deserve and that's why they keep working harder and harder and harder but if they really just if they genuinely just believed that they were the person that is worthy of that they could probably have it the next day yeah. without the hard work you know and like, like obviously you're there's all you're always gonna have to do something you have to do it but i don't know i think that that's uh like you don't you don't hustle and grind your way to the top, you taste the top and then you assimilate. I guess that would be how I frame it. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, some people reject that because they feel that it's like too woo woo, or they think it's coming from a place of like privilege. Like, oh, you're only saying that because you don't have to work and. It's true to a degree, but that limiting belief that you have to get rid of and the belief that I deserve to make more money, I can make more money, that has to come first, full stop. And to believe that you are worthy of making more money and that you don't have to work you know, 12 hours a day every day. If you want to become Jeff Bezos, probably you have to work on a business that much for years and years and years and years but for most of us that's not the goal right um you know there are people that will hop on a phone call and make 10 grand because they've developed the skills and the knowledge and they can help people with that but you know does that necessarily mean that it's because they've cultivated the life and the knowledge to get there and they've done the work before but 
if you never believe that you are worthy of attaining financial freedom in that sense, then you're never going to do it. That's that's the end of it. You know, if, if you think that your only way is to work 12 hours a day in a factory, then that's all you're going to get. And that that's true regardless of whether it offends your sensibilities because it's that whole thing of like, if you can make that mindset change, then it hurts the ego in that, oh, fuck, I've, maybe I've been doing it wrong this whole time. Maybe I've been working, you know, for an hourly wage. Uh, and some people, you have to do that. I've done it. That's the reality of life. But I don't think you should discount it. Just like, you have to believe that that can happen before it can happen to you. And why wouldn't you want that to happen? Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I just want to comment on, my friend Frazzle Dazzled on Twitter, uh, I forget he, who he was quoting, but you can have one idea while walking on a beach that will make you millions of dollars. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, I, I, re I remember have seeing have that, that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have that time allotted in the day where you aren't just doing the busy work where you can allow that knowledge to come from the ether to your subconscious to process things behind the scenes when you're just walking and relaxed on a beach. Otherwise, if you're always focused on like a menial task where you have to input this to output that, then none of those grander scheme ideas are going to come to you as well. Yeah. I mean, I like, like some of my best tweets and knowledge have come from just walking in the forest. Yep. You know, is that work as such? <sighs> I don't know, but it's it's just allowing yourself to have those creative thoughts which can benefit your business or whatever you're doing or just your life in general uh, that you can't have if you're only working for an hourly wage and everything. And that triggers people sometimes, but you know, if it triggers you, maybe look at why it's triggering you and analyze if there's some different way you can yeah. frame that. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I could not agree more with, with the, you know, anything. And I don't, I mean, I don't really, I, I, I try to not even look so much at like, you know, engagement or likes or anything like that. But I will say that I do notice the more, the more I, like the more, it's weird. It's like an energetic thing. The more in tune, I guess I am when, when I have these thoughts, like, the more that the more thoughts come to me, the more people seem to resonate with them, which is really interesting. And most of them do yeah. come, you know, when I'm out walking and I walk a lot and it, and it, it always yeah. comes like that's the creative trigger. And, I, and it, you know, it's funny because I, I really think it, it just it comes down to at least for me. Right. My like all these things started happening for me once I actually met people that were doing them, right? Like once I actually saw in real life people that were doing them and I just realized like, wow, like this guy's not, you know, he's not some rocket scientist. Like he, he just sent it, you know, it was just confidence. And I think the, yeah. the sooner you can, like confidence is a superpower. I will die on that hill. It's like everything I have ever yeah. accomplished in my life has been the result of quote unquote irrational or early confidence, but I was confident and it worked out. And I think it's, I think, I think yeah. that is the, I think the correlation is causation in that case. I think the confidence yeah. causes yeah. things. And that's kind of what I was going for with the, you know, the not so much the hustle and grind. It's really just, if you can switch your belief and you can switch, you know, how you think about things it's, it's going to happen for you that much faster rather than just throwing shit at the wall and like you, you have to do both but i don't know yeah yeah well confidence is at heart the belief that you can do something mm -hmm. and like we've been saying this whole podcast you have to believe you can do something before you can do it and before it happens if you don't believe that something's going to work out before it works out then it's not going to work out it's as simple as that. So you can have confidence in, you know, thinking you can go up to a girl and ask for her number and she's going to give you her number. If you mm -hmm. don't have the initial confidence to try, 
then it's never going to happen. It's the same principle with business. It's the same principle with all these other things. And now, now that I've realized that, it's, you know, I'll, I'll speak, speak to my parents about, you know, a new thing that I want to do. Like, for instance, um, I'm coming out with a glycine supplement. So now it's, I tell people, I'm going to come out with a glycine supplement and people would be like, oh, but isn't that like hard to do? And like, will you sell? It's like, I will sell su that supplement yeah. now. You know, that's that's the mindset, sh mindset shift. You know, if I go into it like, oh, I'm not sure if it'll sell, you know, there's a whole lot of other glycine supplements out there, you know, then it's never gonna happen. And of course it'll fail. Yeah. So that is the shift that you have to make, I think within everything whether it's girls business or whatever it is that you're trying to do creatively well you realize um, they're all the same that's all it is they're all the same yeah fitness yeah. girls business music create out whatever it is like the same principles apply to everything in my opinion and they're and they're all and yeah. they all they all it's so funny they all like loop together in this in such a weird conglomeration but it's so true yeah and it's like a positive feedback cycle as well. Once you, and I think this is why some people, well, most people realize like how powerful the gym mm -hmm. is in changing a life is that the gym is like a concrete representation of physical manifestation of changes in your life if you put in the work. And if someone's never experienced that before, they can go to the gym and whether if it's only three times a week that you're going, but you're going consistently and then you get bigger biceps and you get stronger and you feel better. You're like, fuck, what else can I do that if I'm putting in the work each day um, and I'm consistent with it, then it opens so many more, more doors up in your life. And like you said, it's all the same because it, it is all the same. Um, believing in something that you can do it putting in the work at the same time. It's not just one or the other. Um, and then you can change your life. It's as simple as that. It really is. And it, that's, that's the thing you too, you realize that, and honestly, I think it's for, for me, it's sometimes uh, can be negative in a way. You realize how f fucking easy, like all this shit is. It's not hard. None of it's <laughs> hard, you know? Yeah. But then you get to like, yeah. but you have to realize too that, at least for me, like it's like sometimes, I think about, I'm like, oh, that's, like, I think about stuff because it's everything, I realize, like, everything is so simple at this point, and then I assume that, that other people, like, think the same way, and so I won't say anything about it or whatever, but it's probably a negative thing in that case. Have you ever thought about, like, that? Like, sometimes yeah. I'll be like, oh, like, they know that, but it's, like, it could be really helpful, and they probably maybe don't know that, but it's, but once, once yeah. you realize that, you just, like, that's the secret, is there is no secret. There is no secret. You just do it. Yeah. It might fail. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. If it fails, you learn. You learn what to do better next time. And then you go on and try again. You know, there is no secret, like you said. Um, I think that that's a bit of a tough one because you can tell people these things, but until they experience it for themselves in their own lives as a result of them trying it, um, then it's not really going to resonate and get through. Like some people will listen to this and be like, oh, they're just BSing. Like you can't just believe things into existence, um, which is true to a degree, like obviously working hard and everything. But I think the best thing to do is just show people. And that's one of the, like me working out consistently for years, people notice that. Um, and they've said to me like, oh man, like you show that it's possible mm -hmm. and then they also believe that it's possible and then they try it and then they realize that it's possible like concretely and that is like the mindset shift that happens. You can go to a million, you know, self-help and motivational seminars, but until you actually implement the knowledge and try it yourself, it's never really going to sink in. Um, yeah. Yeah. What were we just talking about? Where did we leave that off? Uh, how you have to you have to show people things, right? Mm -hmm. And so my next thought, I was getting ready to segue into, you know, the the idea of where the world's at right now, and how you know all the negative emotions with the modern world and just how broken things are, and then yeah. segue into the idea of the the island 
or the the shared community space and just yeah. kind of talk about that if that's good yeah. what were you going to say yeah yeah no, no no we'll talk about that and then i'll say what i was going to say um so yeah what i believe and i will into existence the fact that we will have some kind of community with the people that we know through twitter that is a whether it's a tropical island compound whether it's just some beach real estate that we all go in on to create a community of people that are making money online location independent um we discussed this earlier but a focus on you know doing the work that we need to do training outside um spiritually developing as well whether that's group meditation whether that's you know running yoga classes fucking mindset development just kind of bouncing ideas off each other i think that is a hundred well, i know that that's a hundred percent possible i looked at tropical islands that are 500k us split mm-hmm. between however many people that is entirely feasible for us to try even if it goes to shit which it won't not gonna you know will that into existence but you know, I think this idea that we have that I've so many people are keen for it. You know, when I've talked about it, it's like I I, I get dozens of messages like, "Bro, I'm 100% down." You know, city that I'm in is going to shit. You know, even if we try it for six months, we build this thing. You know, I think it can be a culmination of all the best kind of minds on Twitter. Um, anyone that wants to get involved and just that wants to I think there's a gap in the society that maybe we live in at the moment where there is no real community as such in Western society like it's very individually minded uh, orientated so I don't know how do we get this ball rolling what are we thinking with it Um, I think these ideas should be discussed because I want to try it personally I think a lot of people do I know that a lot of people do dude it's it's so funny because I remember one of my best friends, we, we roomed in college for a semester. Mm. We were absolutely baked one night. I mean, <laughs> super fucking high. And, yeah. and we, we had this conversation about buying islands. And I re- remember we, we went on a tangent and we were Googling them. And I was amazed because they are. They're so cheap, right? Yeah. And then yeah. – and, and it's funny because you, you know, seeing your stuff, of, I, I can't remember when I found you, but you, you definitely inspired me in a lot of ways, you know. You were one of the first kind of aesthetic post accounts that I saw and just also to some of the other health stuff that maybe I wasn't as in touch with or as stuff that I didn't rep as hard as I maybe do yeah. now. Um, and I saw that idea and I was just like, damn, and it's amazing. And, and, and that's the reason it's amazing is because The modern world we live in is broken, you know? Twitter, and that's why people love Twitter, or or money Twitter, or whatever you wanna call it, right? Is because it's an escape from the mindset that people have in, like, you go into, if you go into general pop, you know, the masses areas, like, if you take a walk, and and at least, I don't know how it is over down under, right? But Mm -hmm. if I go to Walmart, it's like, man, like people are, so, and I hate to see it. Like it breaks my heart to see people mm. that are unhealthy, you know, just like they have negative emotions. They're like cussing because they're in a three person line to check out. And it's just like, it's, yeah. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. And, and there's all this, and especially too with all the dysgenic, you know, crazy ideology now that's being spread. It's, it's just, there, I mean, there's, we could go down that whole rabbit hole and it's, it's like half of it's political, half of it's just like pure, they just lack soul, you know, mm. and, and charisma and like, I don't know, purity, I guess. But I think it, it's gonna, I think I know, we're, it's gonna happen. And I think yeah. it's really exciting because to think about it like this, right? Like this, this pandemic has rocked a lot of industries. And one of those being mm-hmm. travel. So I wonder right now, and the other thing too, like, you know, all these hotels are crazy cheap, right? Like you can get rooms at some of these places. I know guys that, that do this and they like, they're getting rooms at these hotels super cheap. So like, I'm thinking about it from the real estate perspective 
you could probably pitch like we could probably get some real momentum behind this idea from a you know vc or some sort of like capital fund idea you know mm -hmm. pitching people as cost of living plus you know the the community in the mindset in the just the the overall vibe of that you know you you give them you have top top nutrition you've got guys that are in there freaking grinding in the gym you know in there fighting doing martial arts things like that swimming building businesses you know mm. creating things and it's just it's, it sounds like such a pure just a wholesome environment that i want to be around it and you, you know we talked too about how you can't you know people listening to this that maybe aren't like our space that we've built is is really defined by the positivity and the the, the self-belief and whereas other people you know might not necessarily just gravitate to that right and you said we have to show them we have to be the example and so if we like right now i think we can all agree that the modern world is relatively broken right there's obviously always good to find in it but all the yeah. all the stuff that we see all the media all of the and it's not just the media you know it's it, the media is influencing people that's the real problem it, it is influencing people and so yeah. if we can just be the positive example against that then they have no choice but to assimilate you know and I think that's the the really powerful thing about it is that, at least the way I think about it, is if we do this, it could be, mon like that's how you change the world. We build our community and make it so great that the people that are you know riding the, riding the fence, you know the the spiritual war is tugging at them from both ends. They're gonna pick that over, over the dysgenic, you know, destructive ideology or, or communities and things like that. And I think that's the real power. Like that's how you change the world. Yeah. Well, what do you? It comes down to what do you want to believe in? Do you want to believe that you can't achieve anything? That there are systems of power that make it so that you can never make carve your own path in life. That you are somehow unworthy because of X and Y. Or do you want to believe that you can do anything you want to do, which is possible with work? Do you want to cultivate an environment where that mindset is the default rather than something you have to work towards? Like, you know, you have to, one of the things that you unfortunately have to do when on this kind of journey of improving your mindset, whatever, is stepping away from negative influences, whether they're friends or family that are constantly assaulting your energy and your motivation and if they're always these people that through no intent like dark intent of their own for the most part it's just a result of how what experiences they've had and how they've grown up and they were never given the tools to kind of deal with that so there's no like i don't have any maliciousness towards them or whatever there are obviously some nefarious characters out there that want to bring you down but for their own you know benefit to their power and things uh, but for the most part, the people that are like negatively affecting you, they're just doing that as a function of how they've lived and how and the media that's like programmed them or whatever. So unfortunately, one of the things you have to do is recognize that some people are going to be uh, negative influences on you and you have to protect your own self. If you want to do good things in this life and you want to be able to achieve things you have to cut those people out that are necessarily like bring you down you know there are people in your life that crabs in a bucket scenario they see you doing better than them and they want to tear you down because it influences it, it attacks their sensibilities of um you know it, it highlights highlights within them if you're doing something you're in a similar environment and context you're succeeding you're breaking out of that structure it shows to them that it's possible and then if it's possible then they have to look at themselves and go, well, fuck, maybe it's me rather than some external thing keeping me down. And that's, you know, that's a, a tough thing to deal with in the mind of a lot of people. And they can either go one way where they take inspiration from it, growth mindset, um, you know, make ch positive changes in their life or they go the other way and they try and bring you down and they try and say, oh, that shit's not going to work because blah, blah, blah. And really they have no idea about it. They have no expertise in whatever you're trying to do. 
uh, so it's just like an egoic thing. But I think the power of this island community that we're going to set up, whether it's an island or you know just beach real estate somewhere, um, will be that everyone involved is going to be committed and dedicated to a grander purpose, and that is so that is the glue which holds a community together that there is a common goal there is something to strive together to work towards and i think that's what's missing in western society because of all these fragmented communities and you know a lot of migration and mixing of people and all the rest of it you end up like not having those ties to the community that you might have had for hundreds of years if you only lived in your own space and you had your own traditions but a lot of western society that's unfortunately not the case anymore so i think having the capability for us to do something like this you know location independent you're working from a laptop why not give it a go fuck it even if it all goes to shit you have a crazy story imagine telling your grandkids about the time that you and your bros that you met on twitter fucking tried to form an island state and you know you're all trained together for six months you came up with crazy business ideas like you know that alone is going to be again life experience that you can go with and imagine that on your resume you know what i mean so i'm 100 percent behind it whether it's <clears throat> within two years once all this covid bullshit clears up a bit more or whether it's further down the line um i don't know i I see the validity in it. I think a lot of people do, um, especially in our corner of Twitter. Uh, so I'm all for it. Yeah, I mean, I just wonder. I, I want to do it I, now. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, me too. Me too. I'm getting ready to move. Let's start. Let's start looking at places. <laughs> um, I just wonder, like, as far from the financial perspective, you know, what? I, I feel like it's pro. It might be even cheaper than we think. Really, like. Yeah. If, if you find you find a distressed hotel or resort that has zero income right now because they're not allowed to, mm. we get twenty five. So here's another problem you'll have with it. You do have to filter, right? Because there will be a lot yeah. of people that say, "Oh, that sounds sick," but you don't want the wrong people in. So they're, 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 that'll be a process. But yeah, I just I mean, you tell like think about what people are paying for in San Francisco for seven hundred square feet. So if we go to somewhere coastal in Uruguay, you know, we have Lawrence call his people and hook us up and we find, <laughs> we find some distressed resort that's getting zero tourism when they've depended on tourism and we have people that are paying premium dollars for some soy shithole in San Fran or New York City, like, yep. I feel like the financials would work out, you know? They're like the rent there can't be more expensive than the rent would be. And then we're all together and, you know, you could get someone to, you know, cook for everybody or like you set these, this, these like just style of living things. And it would be, and you yeah. know, you talked about how you have to remove negative influences and that's true. You do have to <clears throat> remove negative influences, but the crazy thing, like, I don't even think that like not having the negativity wouldn't even be the benefit. Having, you know, knowing every day that I'm going to wake up and you're going to wake up and, and I can't let soul bra beat me when we throw the, when we throw the bar on our back. Like, dude, that's, <laughs> that's, that's an amazing thing. And that's something I fucking miss, you know, because like yeah. I was honestly, I'm not even close to where it is to as strong as I, I used to be when I was yeah. like 19 or so and I was playing ball and I would go in every single day and my fucking boys were in there and he's not gonna look like a bitch in front of me, and I'm not gonna look like, or uh, uh, maybe not look like a bitch, he's not gonna be the bitch to me, and I'm not gonna yeah. be the bitch to him, and like that healthy yeah. competition is, yeah. it's, you, can't, you can't replace that, man, and it's just, I can't imagine what we would get done, and it just sounds, it just sounds perfect, really. Yeah, well there's that, and then the also not even, you know, removal of the negativity, but removal of all the other BS, all the other stuff that impacts your waking consciousness, which just takes away from the things that move the needle, having that healthy competition, healthy masculine competition that a lot of guys don't have because of this assault on masculinity in Western culture and how it's bad to be a man and how, you know, you should, you shouldn't like 
compete and mm. withhold your passion and you know maybe it's gay to have fr- close friendships with dudes and things and I reject all that and I don't pay attention to that but some people do take that on board and that is a result of like the media programming all the rest of it that has been unfortunately in the waking consciousness of western societies for the last you know 20 years really like and a little bit further that's like how it's coming to the mainstream so i think like separating yourself from that is another massive benefit that if you only focus on and direct energy towards the things that are benefiting you that you know whatever you what's the saying wherever attention goes energy flows so if you're just only focused on the sick things that are going to benefit you and all the rest of it then you have no choice but to succeed Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's uh yeah it's it's crazy because there is and i don't like i think a lot of guys still well maybe not I guess because I see a different screenshot of some OnlyFans chick just balling every day, so maybe not. But like, <laughs> I think I think I think a lot of guys like take take some of that like anti-masculine programming with a little bit of a grain of salt. But I think what they what they lose in that is like they they it just like it, it takes it takes their edge off, right? Like I don't think guys are running around, or maybe like I said, maybe they are, but. Like it, t- like guys. It's not even just that we have to reverse like that, that hive mind sort of programization towards like making guys more sensitive. We need to completely reverse that, right? So many guys are, and especially you see it too with all the like, all the like pickup artistry shit. Like guys don't just do shit anymore because they want to. Like every, it seems like so much derives from. Like, like they, they're going for female attention. Like, guys don't do anything for for just their own validation anymore, you know? Like, we've we've lost, yeah. and you see it. Like, people, like, you don't, it's seen as, like, like, guys don't have, it's, like, the study. The study's gone. Like, men don't cultivate themselves, like, the way they should. It's like the concept of the Renaissance man, you know? They don't, mm. they don't pursue. Yeah, I agree. Like um, guys pursue great I'm and we just, talked about this too go go sorry to, you cut uh, out yeah, like you're right word um like we talked about this with with seeing other people and i've done this personally like i've wanted things not because i really wanted them but just because i wanted to go out and like have every chick you know like guys don't pursue things just to pursue mastery and we're missing that yeah. and i think that like the allure of that with and, and everybody has their own different talents too you put all those minds together you can create something really phenomenal exactly you have a community where people are specializing in different things um again that's why you know part of the industrial revolution where we fix our food supplies you know so not everyone has to be out gathering hunting food all the time that enables other people mm-hmm. to specialize in what they're naturally good at um that's like one of the same kind of concepts is if you're in a community where someone's super dialed in on fitness and nutrition, they can handle that thing. Someone has better skills in business. They can help with that. Like it's a, that's the role of community and that's, you know, you want to live for the benefit of others. And if someone specialized in a skill and has expertise then they can share that with other people. And I think, you know, I, I just, I don't see any negatives in it truly. Um, even if it doesn't go to plan but you know if anyone's out there listening they have venture capital connections hit me up give me an email message logan you know whatever it is if you have thoughts on it you want to get involved and you have meaningful information and expertise that can help honestly get in contact with us because this is something we want to bring into reality in the next few years uh once all the covid shit you know that probably put breaks on some of it with travel but this is going to happen. Um, this is reality. So get in contact and we can sort this out. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to get fucking yoked on that island. I mean. Man, insane. The, <laughs> if, if, like, if you can't see my traps from the boat, like, 100 nautical miles out, <laughs> we, we, we fail. Exactly. 
man i'm excited for it uh logan thank you so much for joining me on the soulcast i'm uh, sure we'll do this again but hopefully people get a lot out of it the island is now going to come into fruition it's going to become part of my daily affirmations and we're going to make it happen but thank you so much again uh, i know you're coming out with a, a course of your own so why don't you tell us a little bit about that before we head off yeah man um it's been great it's been great being on the podcast and uh and yeah man i've been working i've been working on this it's really not even like something i'm just doing now i i look at it as kind of the culmination of of my life really um you know i've been in the like i've been lifting intently since i was like 14 um mainly for sports and doing all that and and then I really got thrust into being a kind of a health nerd. Um, cause I was actually diagnosed with Graves disease when I was 15 or so. And mm-hmm. it's, which is an autoimmune illness, hyperthyroidism. Um, and I was on the medication, you know, and every time they would try to lower the dose and I would do well, whatever, it just come right back and they'd had no idea what was going on. And so between those two goals, you know, And I've always been, like, I was a a solid athlete. Like, I was a good athlete, but I always wanted to be the best, and I wasn't just, like, some freak. So Mm. between the combination of all those three things, I've just learned a lot, you know. I've gone to, and I also, I did a year of mechanical engineering, which I think shaped my background in kind of a unique way. Um, And then after that, I did a year of exercise science before dropping out. But, yeah, and so really, I've just cultivated all these different, like, perspectives and I really think that there's a, there's so much bad information out there you know and Twitter is a good spot you get a lot of good stuff but you also don't get like, like I think that people really do and I, I call it the limitless playbook right because I really believe that I think that everyone has the physical potentiality to be elite like I think they can mm-hmm. do that and maybe yeah maybe not everyone's going to be Usain Bolt or LeBron but like you can change your body in a really dramatic way and i think that there's going to be a lot of stuff in there that people haven't seen before and are not aware of yet you know and there's and it's it's tough because it's tough to do that because there's a lot of good information out there but i think there's especially from the you know there's a lot of good diet stuff out there um and and it's really just I'm, my goal with this is try to implant the way I live and the knowledge that I have now and the, my brain into everyone because I want them to feel like I do. Like if the only time I ever really feel bad or don't make progress is if I go on like some sort of like weird like degenerate party boy spree, which I tend to do <laughs> from time to time. Like yeah. other than that, dude, I'm so it's honestly a problem. I have so much energy and like lust for life that I, I can't control it at times. Like, <laughs> and I, I want to share that with people, and I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I think it'll help a lot of people, hopefully. So, I'm sure it will. I'm I'm very excited to read it myself when it comes out. So, Logan, the Limitless Playbook, check it out, guys. Um, yeah, thanks I appreciate again. that. And it's not, so I will say too. It's not just uh, there's going to be videos. And as well as it'll be videos, um, you know, breaking down, like just there, it'll be videos and like teaching, but also to giving people like templates they can use in their daily life. It'll be sweet. Check it out. Check it out. But I appreciate it. And it was, it was a pleasure, bro. It really was always a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. All right. That does us for episode 17 of Soulcast. Um, what's your Twitter handle? Logfit6, is it? Yep. At Logfit6. All right, so follow Logan. Uh, Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Word up. Have a great day over there in Australia. I'm going to go to bed here soon, I think. All righty. Sweet dreams, my man. I'll talk to you later. Take it easy, brother.